I, I just cooked something for, um, you know, because this call is coming up. So I was feeling like a little bit inspired. So I made this uh, dal makhani. What? <laughs> yeah, because I was like craving Bakara dal makhani. It's just like <laughs> so tasty. And oh, I was like, I need to make this in my house because it's already been too many months that I haven't <laughs> had yeah. it So when did you actually uh, leave from India? Uh, I left on uh, the 18th of March, so uh, just before all the lockdowns kind of started um, being put in place, and um, yeah, and it wasn't as scary, I suppose, at that point when I left, so it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, just all kind of come come about really, really quickly. Yeah, anyway, fingers crossed. So um, yeah. this Basically, a, a huge digital blitz across the Fever Network, and Radio One is part of the Fever Network. So, yeah. uh, uh, you know, we're raising funds for the COVID warrior. Uh, whatever point we get will go towards the PM Cares Fund. So, in between our conversations, about two times, I kind of stop and ask people to please contribute. Uh, okay. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. That's a nice. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, ready. Okay. Well. Uh, let me get to the top. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, chef, uh, restauranteur, master chef, model, author, uh, Indian lover, Sarah Todd. Welcome to 100 Hours, 100 Stars on 94.3 Radio 1. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad that we have this opportunity to be able to talk with each other because, you know, we're just so lucky technology is there right now. Isn't it just? Uh, so, you know, everyone has a COVID-19 story, Sarah, you know, in, in times like these. Uh, what's what's your COVID-19 story? Oh, my gosh. You know, to be honest, I am always running like from one country to city to, you know, another place. So for me, it's just been so amazing to be at home cooking in my kitchen and you know, like this you know, beautiful dal makhani that I've made now because I had a little bit of extra time, you know, and um, I'm inspired by all my travels across India and all the dishes that I've tried. So for me, I'm making the most of it and just cooking a little bit more homely food and, um, yeah, just spending time with my son, which is incredible. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, you know, um, I have to come to your India Connect and your India story. Uh, when when did that start for us? Can you give us a little bit of your backstory? My son is half Indian, so his dad is Indian, and I uh, have been trying Indian dishes, oh, gosh, for so many years now. And I lived in an Indian household in London, and I remember just making fresh roti and alu gobi and oh. dog and all these incredible dishes. And the thing, the crazy thing about it is, I think the Indian food that we try in Australia is always a little bit Australianized, I suppose. And we get the things like butter chicken and, you know, dal makhani and, you know, yeah. things that are a little bit heavier, but they're not the home style foods. And when I started having home style food, I was just blown away because, you know, it's healthy, it's light, it's so flavorsome. And for me, I was a model at the time. So I was always looking for ways to be healthy but add flavor so that was always the important thing for me and um yeah and then it honestly I started uh, at Le Cordon Bleu because I became obsessed with cooking and right. uh gave myself a year I said you know take a year off modeling and try and make cooking a career and if it if it works then yes go for it but if it doesn't then you know I'm still young enough to go back to modeling and Honestly, everything just started to like snowball from there. And I ended up applying for uh, MasterChef Australia and right. got in. And one of the dishes that I cooked was actually aloo gobi, yeah. um, a fancy version of it. And the night that episode aired in India, I got about 50,000 followers. <laughs> just exploded and I was like what is going on like is this spam like how is there so many people you know that are following me now and I thought I have to figure out what the fuss is all about and I decided to plan a trip to India and when I did my first trip to India 
no, none of the contestants were making trips to India. So I think I was one of the first people from MasterChef Australia to come across. And it was just like this um, explosion of media. And, you know, I was in every magazine and every newspaper and platform. And I was just like, I don't know, it was this world that I'd never seen before. And, and it was just so beautiful. Like, I remember one of my first cooking demonstrations, I uh, had this beautiful couple that came uh, to my class and they had two young children. And they said to me after the class, like, we want to show you around and, right. you know, take you to explore. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, like, of course, I'd love to because I'm here on my own. I didn't even have a manager or anything with me. And they took their two kids and themselves and took me to Old Delhi, which... Oh like on you know it was on in between a certain festival so it was packed like a people jam you know person after person and and I was just so like overwhelmed with their how giving with they were with their time and I was just like you know wow would I do that for um someone in my country I'm not sure and it just kind of like made me realize how warm the people are and you know they give their shirt off their back in India and I just really fell in love with the culture and the people and of course the food and the flavors and um, I don't know, I got stuck there, I suppose. <laughs> uh, you have a very, very strong connect with Goa. I mean, you know, how can you not love Goa? Uh, and then you went ahead and set up this beautiful restaurant, Antares, which is overlooking the Indian Ocean. Um, you know, uh, so you've had wonderful experiences in, in, in India, collaborating as well, I think with, uh, with the wine rack and then with PBR. Uh, you know, and all of that. Uh, what what has it taught you about yourself? You know, your 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 stay here in India and you working here. What has it taught you about yourself? Honestly, like I, uh, even if I look back at the MasterChef journey, I was very quiet. I remember the producers pulling me aside at one point and saying, "Look, Sarah, like you need to open up and show your." Um, personality, and I was just so nervous. Like I remember at the end of the series, I you know, struggled to pick up the phone and call people. I was a very, very shy person. And I think just getting to India and being thrown into this, um, you know, these incredible experiences of opening up my own restaurant and, um, you know, the camera crew was filming every single step of the way. And yeah. I couldn't actually, I had to learn, I had to grow. And I think it was that um, being so exposed uh, I just had to push through it. You know, I, I, I'm a very determined person, so I don't want anything to fail. And I, uh, yeah, just had to learn as I went along. And the crazy thing is when you become an entrepreneur or a business owner, there's no one to turn to to tell you the answer, you know, and every, every other job or, you know, things that you're doing, someone else, you can easily just turn to someone and say, oh, is this right? Am I doing the right thing? But in the entrepreneurial world, it's very... Um, you need to grow confidence and realize that I think taking risks is okay and making mistakes is okay because you have to learn and all of us are going through our own journey and if um, we make more mistakes than other people, then I think we grow more. So for me, I honestly, like in those couple of years, I just grew into myself and my confidence and trusting myself and and yeah, and just just really growing, I suppose. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get you to share some lockdown recipes. And before that, to my Radio 1 viewer now, please make sure you uh, scan the QR code that you can see down here. Uh, please click or click on that link. It'll take you to where you need to go to fill in those details. And please donate generously. All the money is going to our COVID-19 warriors. It's going to go into the PM Cares Fund. So this is what we're doing it for, to tribute, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a tribute to them and also to raise funds. So please, please, you know, donate generously. Okay, Sarah, let's have some uh, lockdown recipes. <laughs> well, honestly, I uh, it's it's crazy because we can't go out to go and get groceries all the time. So it's all about being quite, um, you know, uh, adventurous with our dishes as well. So for me, it's just making sure you've got a few items in the pantry. I have been doing a lot of one pot wonders where, you know, it's throwing a lot of ingredients in together. And I have to say I'm inspired by India with this. So 
um, I just made the dal makhni, but I don't need to tell you all the recipe for that. Um, but it's these simple dishes that are very flavorsome and nutritious. So also making lots of, you know, really healthy salads and soups, because I think the important thing at the moment is we're all in lockdown, we're not moving too much. And it's important to stay mentally strong. And to do that, we need to be consuming as many nutrients as possible. So I've been trying to be quite healthy, um, of course, flavorsome, but healthy at the same time as well. Can I just jump in? Uh, so ISO, ISO cooking is all the trend, as in home, <laughs> you know, the fact that we really need to stay healthy and keep our immunity up, especially in, in times like this, where we are plagued by disease. So um, yeah. ISO, ISO cooking, <laughs> what's your take on that? Uh, you know what? It's like everyone's their little master chef at home right now. And the thing is, I think cooking can be quite overwhelming for a lot of people, but we're forced to right now. So everyone has to be cooking at home because, you know, takeaway isn't really a thing. It's, you know, we're left to our own devices at home. So you, everyone's realizing that it's quite fun and they're, you know, better than they think as well. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, I mean, for me, love a curry because whatever vegetables you have in the fridge, throw in spices, throw in some tomatoes and it's something delicious. Um, yeah. We've been making, we've actually made a um, flat Nutella flatbread. So we like a hazelnut um, chocolate and on like a, a thin kind of crepe roti base. And just oh. lathered it up, sliced banana, and my son is obsessed. And it's something he can get involved in as well, you know, making those flatbreads at home. Like, get your kids involved because... When you say flatbread, is it like the same dough as you use to make your rotis? Is it the same thing or is it different? Yeah, so you can use that, but I actually used a rice flour. So it's um, more like, a, I guess, an Assamese-type um, crepe batter. So rice flour, a uh, little bit of egg, and I didn't even add in any other flavorings at all. So you just add all that together, make it quite runny with water, um, right. a little bit of milk, and then it's cooked in a um, dawa or a, a, a pan. Yeah. So just a you know really thin flat crepe, and then as soon as you've flipped it, cooked both sides, got some nice color on it, and then lather it with some you know chocolate or honey or whatever you have in the pantry. And then we put some bananas in there as well. And it was absolutely incredible. Yum, oh, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> so now um, I also know that you have a great fascination for tea. You actually did a TV series, I think, or a documentary where you cover the tea gardens. And then I went to your Insta account and I noticed like a really interesting dish called a tea cured kingfish or surmai, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, that's very interesting, you know, using tea uh, in, in, your, in your recipes. Yeah, you know, it's um, such an incredible flavor. It's just like with cooking, it's about trying to layer those flavors coming through in a dish. So um, basically a cured fish is usually salt-based. So I use a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and then, I yeah, just fresh tea as well. So dried tea, throw that in there the couple of spices and you just lather it on the fish and um, let it sit for a couple of hours or overnight is even better. It extracts all the moisture and it makes it more like a, um, you know, uh, yeah, a cured fish type thing. So you don't need to cook it in the pan after that. You can just slice it and eat it, you know, with a nice mayonnaise or a salad or anything like that. And it's really incredible. So Mumbai, I think you're getting um, fresh fish at the moment, right? Or is it a little oh. bit different? struggling with the fish we've been struggling with the fish so hopefully yeah. in a couple of weeks uh, you know the docks will open up and stuff so yeah. so far we had to go through like you know frozen so frozen yeah. so like, frozen prawns and all of that but fingers yeah. crossed in a couple of weeks it'll open up so one thing that i made on my instagram that went quite viral was um i made an almond milk at home and you can play around with the flavorings of that as well. So it's just um, soak half a cup of almonds overnight. And right. then the next morning you throw in the whole almond skin and all, bit of vanilla, a couple of dates, and you literally just blitz that together with a pinch of salt. And then you just strain it out or you can, you know, keep all those um, little uh, bits of the almond meal in there as well. It's just a little bit thicker. 
or and you can add a you know a bit of espresso or a little bit of cocoa powder you know play around with the flavorings of that and um, people have been really enjoying that actually so I've been trying to create more recipes that are just using pantry items that everyone has access to and you know keeping it simple as well yeah I noticed that you added a bit of salt I think that brings out the flavor you know makes yeah. it fun. It yeah. does. So, and actually coconut oil, a little bit of coconut oil helps emulsify it as well. Yeah. I was really excited to, 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 uh, to read uh, Bombay Quinoa Biryani. <laughs> so that's, that's really unique. And that obviously is, is far more healthier than a regular biryani. Yeah. You know what? It's a vegetarian biryani. So I, with my cooking in both the restaurants and at home, I always try and add protein. So if it's vegetarian or non-vegetarian, I always like to balance the dish in its micronutrients as well, because I just feel like when someone's walking out of my restaurant, I want them to feel light and energized and not like, you know, really weighed down and, you know, like they need to have a nap after they go to my restaurant. So for me, it's more about um, balancing the dishes as well. So the quinoa adds that little kick of protein. It's a little bit nutty as well. But the base curry of the biryani is very traditional um, in its flavors. So, yeah, it's a, it's just a playing around with the balance in the dish. And, you know, some people are kind of like, oh, what does she do to biryani? But honestly, it's one of the, like, top selling dishes at the restaurant. So, yeah, yeah. people have been loving it. Yeah. So do you have any guilty pleasures when it comes to food? What is your guilty pleasure? Oh, gosh, yes. I mean, I love chocolate mousse. I'm obsessed with chocolate mousse. If it's there, I can't say no. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's probably the key. Banoffee pie, I absolutely love as well. So like caramel, anything with caramel, to be honest. And um, oh gosh, I have a big sweet tooth. It's my mom's fault. She has a huge sweet tooth. So I grew up having a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, just loving it. So for me, it's definitely sweets. Yeah. Which is the biggest food adventure you've had, whether, whether it be, you know, traveling long distances to discover something really magical in terms of food, but which is the biggest, uh, most memorable food adventure you've had? Uh, I think probably would be Rajasthan because I, I went to, um, it was Alila Fort and, uh, it was the little village that was around there. We went just, you know, walked down into the village and it's a very traditional untouched village yeah. and this beautiful home there, these ladies like invited us in and, you know, couldn't speak English or anything. And I obviously can't speak Hindi. And they brought me in and we made budgery ki roti like on the ground <laughs> over the flame. And they were just so beautiful and their faces like just lit up and, you know, these incredible ladies and, dressed in their beautiful saris and they just seemed so happy and and they were so inviting as well and it's just one of those memories that has stuck with me and of course like that bit of jaggery and like you know the sugar and all of that on top and the white butter I'm obsessed with as well it's just and it was just you know the whole experience of cooking it with them and yeah. um, you know being in their home and being yeah just like kind of taken into such a sacred place of theirs Right. So now, you know, post COVID-19, uh, it might be a while before you can get a chance to travel to India. Uh, you know, what, do, what are your thoughts on that? And, and what are your plans for that, you know, for taking things forward? Well, um, I mean, I hope it's not too long and I hope they at least allow business travel coming up soon because I can't stay away for too long. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're lucky in, in the sense that with this pandemic, we have got technology. So there is contact. It's not like I'm not speaking to my staff or speaking to, you know, um, the, you know, everyone running the businesses and all of that. So there's access like that. But obviously, emotionally, it's very tough because it's the longest I've been away from India already. And it is home for me as well. And yeah, I mean, Obviously, I'm going to be back, and as soon as they open up the borders and allow me to, I'll be there. And uh, but I mean, it doesn't stop me. I'm cooking Indian dishes all the time, and and connecting via you know social media channels and all of these different platforms, which is amazing. So it keeps me feeling connected as well. 
Okay, uh, I'm going to need another more another recipe from you. But before that, my Radio One listener, uh, here's where you have to donate generously. Please, uh, there's a QR code there. You can either scan it or you can click on that link. It'll take you where you need to go. So you can fill in your details and please donate generously. All the money that we raise will go towards the PM Cares Fund and that will go towards, you know, our COVID-19 warriors who are fighting on the front lines every single day so that you and I can stay safe at home. So please, please donate generously. And, and over to you, uh, Sarah, you know, what would, what would you like to say to, uh, to the COVID-19 warriors, to people who are on the front line, our doctors and police and all of them who are battling this virus every single day, uh, you know, your message to them. I'm just so thankful. I think, you know, it's uh, definitely a job that requires a very strong heart and mind and to fight through all of this. And yeah, it's incredible that there's people out there fighting for us and putting themselves at risk. And yeah, I mean, it's amazing to see how the world comes together in such a time of crisis and and people are trying to battle through this together. So I, I hope that we can all stay positive and motivated to kick this as quickly as possible so we can all get back to normal and um, start celebrating food and, and life together again. Right. Well, speaking of celebrating food, I mean, you've actually become like a cultural ambassador for Australia and bridging the gap between India and Australia. So, you know, have you found any commonalities between the two cultures? And if so, you know, what might they be? Uh, Yeah, I mean, we are obsessed with the barbecue and it kind of reminds me of the tandoor. It's that smoky flavor and and Australia is also very multicultural. So it's very accepting of different flavors, which I think helped me when it came to uh, creating Indian inspired Australian dishes. So I just recently um, in January did the Australian Open and I did seven courses of Indian inspired uh, food using Australian produce and it was incredible and it was I was I have to admit I was kind of nervous to uh, you know display all this food because they were quite authentic flavors like I did um, uh, shakuti served with a a lobster just butter poached lobster with the shakuti so it's a tangy vinegary flavor that goes with the lobster I served lal mas with Australian um, lamb as well and uh, nettle sag. So nettle is an Australian local ingredient, like a spinach type ingredient, but use that for the sag. I did a soul curry inspired dessert, which was all these beautiful, you know, um, flavors from soul curry, but turned into this kind of magical dessert as well. So for me, was, I that think, like a, was that like a moussey thing or was that like yes. a... Oh. Yeah, so I did a mousse, so it was um, lots of layers of flavors and crunch and textures, but all um, yeah. tasting similar to soul curry. And then I actually did a rose with liquid nitrogen. So I dunked oh. the rose into the nitrogen and then crushed it live on the table for everyone as well. And honestly, wow. like I had this one lady come to me and she said, look, like I had no expectations, you know, um, with the meal, but she said like, this was something I'll remember for my entire life. And I think it was just this incredible kind of mixture of all those travels that I've had across India and then coming back and celebrating Australian produce. And I think it was just a really nice, um, yeah, just unity, I suppose, of both countries. So it was really beautiful, actually. Right. Uh, bringing it back to Mumbai City, you know, which, which Mumbai food haunt do you miss? Um, street food, uh, but also Dakshin I and I love. Um, yeah. I always have a dozer at Dakshin <laughs> Iron. It's like my, like every time I land, I have to go there. I also love Mahesh Lunch Home for right. butter garlic crab. Um, and what's the other? There's the Indian Thali place. Oh, I'm getting it. It's, uh, it's near the roundabout, like. I'm forgetting the name of it, but there's this um, incredible like vegetarian thali place that I always go to as well in Juhu. That okay. um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Why am I forgetting? But yeah, it's amazing. So for me, I love like having all these like traditional dishes, belpuri, um, balbaji, <laughs> like all these like very traditional like Mumbai snacks and the yeah. Mumbai sandwich. So I'm writing my new cookbook at the moment, and I 
put the Mumbai sandwich in there as well, my version of it, which is <laughs> amazing. So there's this little um, sandwich stall behind St. Xavier's College that right. I go to for my Mumbai sandwich, which is delicious. Um, yeah, everything. Solkari I have in Mumbai. Oh, gosh. So <laughs> many things. <laughs> I can see the drool. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, this lockdown is kind of turned us into this, into, into, you know, grubbers. We're grazing all the time. Come, can't go past the kitchen, can't go past the table without picking, you know, uh, on, on something or the other. And you have the Healthy Model Cookbook that you've, uh, that you've written. So uh, can you help us become slightly more healthier grazers? Can you give us a couple of tips as to how yeah. we can graze but healthily? Yeah, so honestly, it's all about flavor. So it's thinking about like you want to eat vegetables, right? If you're roasting off some vegetables in the oven, throw on some spices and masalas onto that before you pop it in. It just enhances it. It adds that little bit more of a, um, a Moorish kind of flavor to it as well. I like, I don't know, I think India is just so lucky because there's so many incredible flavors. The, yeah. It's just the, the cooking process. It's just making sure you're not overcooking the vegetables, you know, just like taking it off just before, you know, like if it's a sag, make sure that it stays that vibrant green and you don't take it too far so that you kill all those nutrients. Um, but like the, you can just add so much flavor to anything with Indian food. And it's just like for me, it's the easiest cuisine to make healthy. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being, uh, you know, part of 100 Hours, 100 Stars. Uh, you've given us some fabulous recipes. We're going to try this. So hopefully the lockdown will, will lift up in a couple of weeks. It's looking a bit tough for Mumbai City, but the rest of the country, I think it's, you know, gradually and slowly being lifted off. I think Goa, uh, they've, uh, they lifted the lockdown, I yeah. think, or almost. Yeah, no cases there now, which is incredible. Yeah. Right. So um, thank you so much. It's such a joy. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back here cooking up a storm for us in Mumbai City and in India. Yeah, I really can't wait. I hope you all stay safe and I can't wait to be back soon. जब सारी दुनिया कर रही थी बकवास तब फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज की शुरुआत करते हुए रेडियो पर जॉन इब्राहिम गौतम गंभीर और वरुण धवन ने मिलकर ये कहा हाय मैं हूं गौतम गंभीर हाय मैं हूं वरुण धवन हाय मैं हूं जॉन इब्राहिम फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के साथ मैं कहता हूं बकवास बंद बदलाव शुरू फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज का सबसे पहला इनिशिएटिव था नो एमसी नो बीसी मैं जॉन इब्राहिम कहता हूं मैं वरुण धवन भी ये वादा करता हूं हम अपनी शहर की औरतों को जुबान सारे पुलिस डिपार्टमेंट को एक साथ मिलकर कहा नमस्कार मैं अमिताभ बच्चन बोल रहा हूँ दिल्ली बेंगलोर कोलकाता और मुंबई पुलिस को बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं मैं देना चाह रहा हूँ आप फीवर एक सौ चार एफ एम मिशन जरूरत का हिस्सा बने ये बदलाव की बहुत बड़ी शुरुआत है और मेरी शुभकामनाएं आपके साथ जब कश्मीर में फ्लड आए लाखों की तादाद में खाने पीने की सामग्री कश्मीर भिजवाई हमारी इस कोशिश के लिए मिशन कश्मीर ने जीता गोवा फेस्ट में प्रेस्टिजियस एबी अवार्ड मैं और आप मिलकर फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज का अगला प्रोजेक्ट शुरू करते हैं ब्लड बैंक एक ब्लड बैंक एक फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के साथ मैं जॉन इब्राहम ये वादा करता हूँ की शहर में जब भी होगी खून की दरकार तैयार रहेगा फीवर 104 और फिर ट्रैफिक जाम की वजह से नहीं जाए कोई जान उसके लिए हमने शुरू की अपनी मुहिम एम्बुलेंस फर्स्ट आई मैं हूँ जॉन इब्राहिम मैं हूँ गौतम गंभीर आई मैं वरुण धवन बोल रहा हूँ आई मैं हूँ आलिया भट्ट जब भी एम्बुलेंस का साइरन सुनाई दे तो हो जाए लेफ्ट क्यूँकी एम्बुलेंस फर्स्ट अब बकवास बंद बदलाव शुरू एम्बुलेंस फर्स्ट के साथ साथ फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज ने जिम्मा लिया ऑर्गन ट्रांसप्लांट का और बनाया ग्रीन कॉरिडोर जिसमें एयरपोर्ट से हॉस्पिटल का सफर जो घंटों का था उसे मिनटों का बना दिया एम्बुलेंस फर्स्ट का डंका सिर्फ हिंदुस्तान में नहीं बल्कि न्यूयॉर्क तक बजा 
रेडियो के ऑस्कर कहे जाने वाले न्यूयॉर्क फेस्टिवल ने एम्बुलेंस फर्स्ट इनिशिएटिव को दो बार एन अवार्ड से नवाजा और फिर कैंसर सर्वाइवर्स की जिंदगी में बदलाव लाने के लिए फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के साथ जुड़े युवराज सिंह फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के साथ कैंसर सर्वाइवर की जिंदगी के बदलाव के लिए मैं युवराज सिंह तैयार हूँ क्या आप तैयार हैं? फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज ने वोटिंग परसेंटेज में किया बदलाव अपनी मुहिम ईच वन खींच वन के साथ नमस्कार मैं हूँ फीवर आर जे अमिताभ बच्चन चुनाव का माहौल बना हुआ और मैं तो कहूँगा कि ईच वन खींच वन जब मैं भी वोटिंग करने जाऊँगा तो किसी को साथ खींच कर लेकर जाऊँगा इंडियन आर्मी के साथ मिलकर फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज ने एक ऐसा जश्न मनाया जिसका शोर बॉर्डर पार पहुँचा मैं गौतम गंभीर मैं हूँ कर्नल वी एन थापर कैप्टन विजय थापर का फादर मैं हूँ मेजर गौरव आर्या फीवर एफएम के साथ मिलकर कहता हूँ इस कारगिल विजय दिवस मिलकर ऐसा जश्न मनाएंगे कि शोर शोर बॉर्डर पार पहुँचे जय हिंद जय हिंद जय हिंद जय हिंद सेवेंथ दिसंबर इंडियन आर्म्ड फोर्स फ्लैग डे पर फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के साथ पूरे हिंदुस्तान ने मिलकर दिखाया अपना देश फ्रेम मैं सिर्फ यही रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहूंगा सारे अपने फैंस और लिसनर्स से आप फेसबुक हो चाहे इंस्टाग्राम हो चाहे इवन ट्विटर हो अगर आप अपना फ्रेम चेंज कर सकते हैं सेवन दिसंबर को तो कहीं ना कहीं आपको रिस्पेक्ट दे रहे हैं आर्म फोर्सेस को दिल्ली की बिगड़ती हवा और पॉल्यूशन से एनवायरमेंट को बचाने के लिए फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज लेकर आया प्रोजेक्ट ग्रीन हार्ट जहाँ हमने दिल्ली एनसीआर में लगाए एक लाख से भी ज्यादा पेड़ आप पहले एक या दो पेड़ों से शुरुआत करो और कोशिश करो कि उन पेड़ों को अपने बच्चों की तरह बड़ा करो पुलवामा अटैक इस मुश्किल की घड़ी में पूरे देश को शहीदों के परिवार से जोड़ रही थी एक वेबसाइट भारत के वीर भारत के वीर तो फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के साथ मिलकर सुपरस्टार अक्षय कुमार ने फीवर 104 सौ चार एफ एम आरोप डी जी सी आर पी एफ ऐसी कहा हेलो डी साहब शरद हाँ नमस्कार नमस्कार अक्षय भाई मेरे साथ दूसरी लाइन पे नमस्ते जी मेरे लायक कोई भी सेवा हो मैं बोला पूरा देश आपके साथ है इस वक्त अभी आई हैव जस्ट सेंड फाइव करोड़ रुपीज टू भारत के लिए फ्रॉम माय साइड फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज ने शुरू की मुहिम हैश टैग सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक ऐसी ब्रेकअप मैं तो सभी दुकानदारों ऐसी आग्रह करूँगा आप अपने दुकान पर हमेशा बोर्ड लगाते हैं एक बोर्ड ये भी लगा दीजिए कृपा करके हमसे प्लास्टिक की थैली की अपेक्षा न करें और फिर पहली बार देश के किसी मीडिया हाउस की पीठ थपथपाने के लिए देश के प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने फीवर 104 सौ चार एफ एम के लिए ट्वीट किया फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज के पिछले पांच सालों की ये तो बस एक छोटी सी झलक थी लेकिन फीवर वॉइस ऑफ चेंज की टीम जॉन एब्राहम के साथ कहती है ये बस शुरुआत है बदलाव अब भी बाकी है Hi, this is Ajay Sano from Fever ninety one point nine FM. This is the hundred hours, hundred stars. We're paying a tribute, a salute to all the COVID warriors, and also here's the most amazing part. Uh, here's a chance for you to help, to support. Uh, you can help by contributing via Paytm, or also you can use the QR code and uh, you know contribute to the PM Cash Fund. And with me today is. someone really really special who is going to be part of one of india's biggest digital carnival she is the darling of tamil nadu uh, you know there is no one who does not love she's got a temple in her name nobody else has reached where you have reached uh, she's a politician she is fearless a fabulous art, uh, actor what a star the one and only kushbu sundar vanakkam madam vanakkam vanakkam how are you how's the quarantine what's happening Quarantine is happening. We are at home. Um, we have been extra careful because I have my mother-in-law who is eighty-six and my mom who is seventy-six. They're both staying with us, so we've been extra careful, not venturing out, out, not even stepping out of the gates. So at home. All right. Anything positive? I do understand. You know, it's a moment of stress. It's the period of stress. Anything positive that has happened during this time? Positive is like we are home. Uh, all the girls are there. Twenty-four-seven, you are spending time together. Um, for normally, we are always there only for dinner because uh, my husband leaves for work, or I go for work, and my girls, of course, the elder one been in London uh, since last year, and the younger one goes to school at seven thirty. So we generally get together only for dinners. But now, like three meal a day, we've been spending time together, watching films together. 
uh, my my young woman is writing a lot of songs, so she is writing those, uh, uh, reading out those poems and songs to me. So it's fun. It's like spending a lot of time together. Super cool. Uh, so life before quarantine, how hectic was it? How was Kushbu in this diary looking? How were the appointments? What what was going on with you? <laughs> no, it's just that uh, I finished the serial. What I was doing, I finished in uh, Jan. So I have been literally. um you know sitting at home and going to the office of course uh, regularly on everyday basis going to the office uh, i'm glad that my elder one is here with us before this corona problem came up so she is here with us and she couldn't go back uh the only thing uh, the diary was filled up because there was a lot of travel involved i was traveling in and out of london almost every 3 weeks because i was spending one week uh, with my elder one in london since she moved there so every month three, once in three weeks one week and that three uh, you know a week or 10 days so that has come to a standstill uh but otherwise uh, here at home what we girls uh, just mother and daughters on an outing we suddenly take off go for a lunch or a dinner um or just go out and have some cup of tea or coffee spend a lot of time together shopping together all that has come to a standstill but then all that we are doing it at home uh the girls of course now being at home they're driving me up the wall in fact just before i came to this uh, conversation with you um uh, me and my younger one had a scrap and we were screaming at each other and she went oh where i went by <laughs> so all those fun times are happening mother with two teenage girls oh my god one is just out of a teen and the one is right at the center of uh, center of the helm of a teen so it's like oh my god Driving yeah. me up the wall, definitely. It sounds like a one-line horror story. A mother with two teenage girls locked inside the house. It's a horror story, madam. <laughs> I, I definitely can't explain it better. It's definitely the same. I ask any mother with two teenage girls. It's like wow. So that's the thing, right? You may be the most award-winning actor, star, but at home you're a mother. uh you know you're there with the kids you know struggling so tell me about some fun moments as a politician i know it's all serious business and you know there is a you know turf of war and all so fun moments as a politician how's that being how's that like yeah fun moments are there as a politician i think uh you know uh, unfortunately if you want to have a little fun and you have some fun then you're labeled oh you're a politician how can you even share a joke in these hours of crisis these hours of trouble you're not supposed to share a joke so probably being a politician comes with a tagline that it has to be all work and no play but uh, i i tend to be a little different one i enjoy myself i live my life to the fullest and of course i'm a, i'm a politician but uh, when i have to work i work when i have to be normal i'm normal so i think uh, that uh, you know those fun parts i continue we share jokes it doesn't matter which party you belong to If there's a good, you appreciate. If there is bad, you rip them apart. So I do my job. <laughs> rip them apart. I like how you said, smiling. She's saying, "I rip them apart." Super. <laughs> so um, you know. Also, tell me about uh, you know at home, like all the work that's happening. I mean, of course, you're you're people who follow what you say. You know, there's you've not allowed anybody into your house. I know that for a fact. In between, you had a dental surgery. Also, you had to go running. So there's some madness, some memorable moments in this quarantine so far for you to share. Moments are always special. Uh, my day starts early. Me and my husband have been working out together, doing yoga. There are some lazy days when I don't want to do it, and I, I just sit back and watch him doing his yoga. Uh, of course, I do try to join him every day, but then you know, with no uh, house help at home, you're like sweeping, mopping, doing the dishes, and uh, washing the clothes. Uh, dusting everything cooking so it's like by the time you finish you are dead meat so there are times when i have my very lazy times and i tell my husband i do get up early even then but then i'm like i'm not interested in doing any exercise today please let me go my husband is religiously he works out in the morning and evening and it is fantastic you're a great to do it <laughs> <laughs> Super. So it's it's been a very hectic life for you. Okay, I'm gonna play a little game with you. Okay, are you ready for that? Yeah. Okay. Super. So I'm gonna give you some situations. Um, and I you just need to give me a nice big smile. And based on your smile, I'll get the answer. Okay. How about that? Okay. So I have to keep a serious face, which is difficult because I keep smiling throughout. <laughs> 
so based on your smile i will get the answer are you ready for your first question okay yeah um there was a time in uh, kush sundar's life where it was a really terrible movie and uh, but unfortunately just to be polite she says yeah yeah very nice she's done it she's done it she's done it she's done it <laughs> I won't ask you whether it's yes or no. Don't worry. Don't worry. Second, of when course. uh, ah, that bad an actor. Of course, that was yes. <laughs> I sorry, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? I lost you in between. I said, of course, that was a yes. <laughs> okay, fine. I won't ask you who did you say to which movie that was. I will not ask you that question. Don't worry at all. All right. <laughs> second one when a when a politician and a few politicians say they don't even know the spelling of corruption they are like corruption free and they are as white as the clothes that they wear <laughs> got it got it got it situation number 3 where an actor says you know all this is my genetic and natural beauty you know so i have not done anything to myself it's all natural yeah i don't do anything i just drink lots of water and i'm this beautiful no okay fine she not going to answer that question at all isn't it no doesn't happen okay. No, but I don't do it, so I don't know if others do it. I can't be judgmental about them. Can't be judging them because I like to take them as a face value. If I know someone who's who hasn't done it, then I I say yes, you haven't done it. So I don't want to be who I don't know. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Look at that. She won't. You can't. You can't mess with Kushbu. I'll tell you, you can't mess with her. Okay. Uh, yeah. So somehow your voice is breaking. Um, is this? You know, I, I don't know. I, this house i don't know whether it's haunted or what it never get never get wifi anywhere oh my god okay uh, yeah now it's better okay fourth okay. situation okay when someone says uh, kushbu idli and uh, you think they think that it's a big compliment that you're paying you but you actually do not like it at all <laughs> i like Yes, yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. No, I actually like it because I I'm not fond of idlis, but I like when people say there's kushbu idli, so I I like it. Has someone served you kushbu idli and said, "Madam, inge paar hai na, madam, kushbu idli." Has someone served you? Ah, uh, probably. Ni munna la pona na pinna varan madhi. Yeno di imme ki munna di pona na apramda varan. Yandu bhaiyendi ti yar me kudkar de illa. Oh my god she's self roasting herself all right now a uh, final final question in the game for you you have to describe your cooking skills with a song your the cooking song skills. yeah with a song <laughs> a cooking skill with a song to describe my cooking okay. huh? hello yes you yes huh? yeah a little bit got... still connection got... issue my my girls will be Can you hear me? Hi, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now I can. Yes. I said rather than me singing and uh, describing my cooking, I think my girls would be the right person to do it, and uh, I'm not calling them and taking them. <laughs> <laughs> any song, any song that comes to your mind, yar. Yeah? You're doing your own review. Come on, Kushbu, Madam J. I give part. Yo, secret ka kashne mar ke. Uh, I don't know. I don't even th- uh, because I'm a very happy person. So thinking of a sad song is a problem. <laughs> anything, it's okay. You sing anything you want. Take your time. क्या जल्दी है? Suggest some song. I don't know. Nothing is coming to my mind at the moment. Marano, Mas, Marano, no? Marano, Mas. अंदर लोग को क्या लगा नहीं लगा? Really, I I I really can't think of a song. Ah, uh, okay. Probably, 
my girls are there they would have yakka yakka ka yakka 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 are they would have <laughs> all right um so you know before we wrap up you know long long ago you came from mumbai um you know here uh, any fond memories of uh, you know life in mumbai uh, those moments anything that you'd like to share because so many of your pictures of you know all based on mumbai the stories are based from there. anything that you'd like to share oh wow well, of course mumbai is where i was born and brought up uh 16 years of my life i have lived in mumbai so that remains a very very special place to me i love going back to mumbai i do it once every year but uh, because my daughter was moving to london we i i just couldn't go to mumbai last year uh, and when we thought of going later this year now with this corona covid 19 we just can't travel again so it's been almost two years since i've been to mumbai um mumbai i have my cousins there i have my childhood friend my my school my teachers my principal uh, my my mm. my cousin there so i think uh, and my aunt's uh, family is there so we love to you know spend at least two weeks in mumbai and uh, stay there and meet uh, my friends and relatives go to the beach have those golgappes and uh, colorful golas uh, you know just see uh, sit by the beach and travel travel by bs bsc best uh, travel by that so uh, yes it's it's a fun um, uh, but uh, unfortunately I haven't been there for two years but i mean two weeks that's it and after that i want to come back to chennai mumbai is it's only my passport which says uh, place of birth mumbai otherwise i am a chennai um, you can't take away my thinking uh, th- thinking language has become more of a tamil so you can't take that away from me i'm i'm known i like being called a madrasi by uh, north indians <laughs> pan intended right there so um, you know all your photos you're so kutti you're so young you're like 16 17 in all those pictures and you know looking really pretty so you know that that first time in um, in in cinema when you first stood there any anything that you'd like to share what happened at that time and who did anyone in your school tell you my god kushbu you both it's so pretty looking you are any memories no, of no, that no. would look at me and tell me i was i was a child i was a child actor so uh, i used to be absent from school and my principal used to be very very upset with me and she used to come and tell me and my mom see she is a good student nakat should be in the school she should be in the class uh, my parents thought you know i was a very very obedient student because she used to take economics and i always got 100 on 100 on economics it's a different ball game all together that maths and science i would just scrape through and she said no she is doing well in english and uh, economics and our geography so i'm fine with it it's okay some people don't get maths so ma'am didn't know the other side me being the most outstanding student most of the time outside the class for being the outstanding student so i uh, but of course uh, school was fun and uh, after that you know it was automatic the transition from being a child actor to uh, to play the lead role and uh, in fact very recently uh, we got uh, yeah hardly i think a year or two got uh, a touch base with boni kapoor ji because he was supposed to be my first producer to introduce me in yes. hindi films in boni ji are in regular touch anil ji is in regular touch of course govinda chimpu kapoor and a couple of my friends we are constantly in touch with each other uh, from the film industry so it's it's otherwise it's fun and uh, I, I, those are the memories where these pictures that Boni ji saw somewhere and he called up and he said, "This is when I signed you for the film. You remember by seeing these pictures?" I said, "Yes, I remember that." So <laughs> this is what I saw. And see, I was right when I wanted to introduce you. See where you have reached today. I said, "Yes, thank you for showing so much of trust in me and believing in me." So that's it. But nobody thought I, I, I was gorgeous. I was a beautiful. and i think we were so busy working it didn't make sense to keep going back and say oh you're so beautiful nobody was bothered about that it was only about work it was not about looks it was not about uh, the social platform it was not about uh, touch ups it was not about beauty cams it was not about any of these filters it was all natural so i think uh, we we belong to i always say that we belong to that old school and we we still believe that we are happy we belong to that old school because we we have those discipline we have that uh, one set of working pattern with us and we continue with that 
Wow, well, you know, well said. Thank you, Boni Kapoor Ji. Rumba Nandri. Thank you for, uh, you know, bringing Kushbu into the movie industry. Hi, hi. Got me well? Yes. I said, Boni Kapoor Ji and a bomb will introduce Pandal Adhika Nandri. Yeah. Amma. Thank you, sir. Rumba, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay so to wrap this up um, let me see how since you have two uh, you know young ones at home let me see if you know the millennial language quiz huh? what is the meaning of yolo what yo yo ha yo yo yolo yolo yo lo ha apni na think think yolo Uh, no idea okay you live only once oh my god you live only once i have no idea okay yeah okay so I, next ne- what is netflix and chill controversial question what does netflix and chill mean netflix and chill me ya chill Net- netflix and chill what it means netflix and chill In the Netflix, you know, I don't even know how to operate here. Yeah. I think plus chill, so you know, sutto. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Ah, finally, FOMO. Huh? FOMO, FOMO. You make it up, Kushbu. I'll leave it to you. Let let it be Kushbu's dictionary. You make it up. What is FOMO? Oh, oh yeah. No, that eyes for your eyes only. Na either. Tell me, FOMO. Oh yeah, four, one, what? What is it? Yeah, four, four. Fear, fear of missing out. Ay yo yo. Now the phone is I'm not. I believe, I believe, I believe. But still, you've not shared with me. See, so many, in so many political rallies, you've gone. So many political meets, you've gone. You've addressed people. You've got claps and all that. Is that a stage that I'm jolly and another cool? Some fun moments while going out in a rally or going and talking to people. Anything, uh, you know, being a politician. Anything fun that happened? No, not not fun. But then, uh, see, I, I'm I've been in politics for ten years. When I go out on rallies or I go for public meetings, I do understand the mood of the people there, the crowd, and whether they are the paid crowd or whether the crowd has come on their own, and whether they are here to look, they are there to look at you or they are there to listen to you. So I can make out the difference. So my my uh, way of speech changes according to that. Because if I know that people are there only to see me. Then I have to start in that language, and then make them, uh, you know, glue to what I have to say. The message that will come in the end, but then make sure that I go into the outflow. And most of the time, what happens is uh, when I'm there, these women, the minute I finish speech and I come back, I find somebody pulling my hair. So I generally plait my hair and go. But you know, you see this long stress of hair. The, the women actually come and they pull my hair to know if whether I'm wearing an extension or wig or it's my real hair. I'm like, why are you pulling my hair? Illegal, sorry, illegal. I'm not fit for no. I'm not paving it. Are you serious? Sorry, you were breaking in that bit. Can you just say that again? Uh, so why do these women pull your hair, Kushbu? Why are they pulling their hair? Why? Oh, they pull my hair. You know, I ask them, "Yeah, moody put you looking, you know? This is not sorry, which is looking, lah. It's not your original moody, you know. Pass through the hair. I'm very sensitive <laughs> for the campaign, and uh, you know, people in Delhi are very different <laughs> from what we see here or the interiors of uh, the other uh, states. What I go to, and uh, Delhi, Ponaka, you know, even uh, you're you're speaking in a crowd where there is there's a little class crowd. So I just clip my hair behind. I don't plait it. Uh, so I just clip my hair, and women will come. Oh, well, that's a lovely extension you're wearing. I'm like, excuse me, that's real. So they literally pull it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, it's real. I'm like, ouch. Oh, yeah, it's real, man. I'm like, why? Why are you people so fascinated with my hair? It's real. It's mom to me, mom's jeans. Leave it. It's precious to me. <laughs> Oh my God, that's that's some fun. I I tell you, so you know, great to do that. Thank you so much for sharing all these um, memories with us. It's really been great, man. It's lovely to see a woman leader like you right at the top. And um, 
you know really amazing stuff thank you very much take care of yourself stay safe thank you take care bye 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 presenting fever network the power of 3 number one station in delhi mumbai Bangalore and Kolkata Fever FM the bomb of Bollywood Congratulations to all of you for being the number one radio station. The biggest CSR initiative on radio. Pioneers of radio drama in the industry. Sports Tyres official radio partners of five winning IPL teams Most entertaining shows and arches India's coolest retro station 107.2 Radio Nasha 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 Gaane ka nasha gungunane ka nasha sunne ka nasha suna celebrities Best of Retro Shows and Arches that take you back in time Radio 1 India's only international network The only radio station Katy Perry vibe with. We were there when you two performed for the first time in India. Global teen sensation Justin Bieber jams with Radio One. Truly global shows and arches. Mega mix. America's top 40 The Mahindra Blues show and more